dubbed as the Military Olympics, this year's International Army Games is being co-hosted by 12 countries. Over 270 teams from 37 countries and regions are involved. China has lots of experience when it comes to hosting such events. I'm in a host city in Xinjiang, Kola. China has hosted 14 events of the International Army Games since 2017. Over the next two weeks, China's Army, the PLA, will both host and participate in the Suvorov attack contest, which tests the skills of infantry fighting vehicles as well as an event called Safe Routes for Military Engineering Personnel. Four countries, Russia, Belarus, Iran and Venezuela join China for these events in Kola. The games are not only about a competition, but also excellent learning opportunities. There are three differences compared to the past. First, the contest is much more similar to real battle. Second, we've added more stages to make it harder. And third, we use a more advanced evaluation system to make the contest fairer. The games can also enhance our friendship with troops of other countries. Besides Kola, the Chinese Navy will host a service ship-related competitions in Qingdao, Shandong Province. 205 Chinese soldiers have also been sent to events in five other countries, like Algeria and Uzbekistan. Zheng Song, CGTN, Kola, Xinjiang. President Biden signed $280 billion CHIPS and Science Act, boosting domestic semiconductor production and research in the United States. Top tech on the surface, the law was aimed at reducing U.S. reliance on foreign suppliers for the parts that drive almost every aspect of today's technology, from cars and computers to weapon systems. But more profoundly, it's yet another roadblock intended to slow the development of China's chip industry. Ultimately, Apart from the United States, other countries with historical advantage in semiconductor manufacturing have dramatically increased their investments to encourage their domestic sector to join the global chip-making race. Faced with this increasingly fierce competition, Nia still believes that China has the potential to realize chip-making self-sufficiency if approached in the right way. First, 第一个是加速需要呼唤更多的IDM企业 了解我们自己的这种制成的
Several depositors in the Chinese city of Shenzhen reported that their bank accounts were inexplicably frozen. A local bank's response provoked outrage and condemnation from netizens. Many netizens reported that they could not withdraw cash or transfer funds from their bank cards at the Bank of China in Shenzhen, as the accounts were frozen. On August 11th, China Business News also reported that several branches of the Bank of China in Shenzhen informed customers via their phones that if they have encountered abnormal use of their bank cards recently, they should go to the bank's desks or log in to its phone app to handle the issue. The news outlet's reporter visited many banks in Shenzhen and found that many people were waiting to address the problem. A staff member told the reporter that the customers came to unlock their frozen bank cards. He explained that the bank took a measure to cooperate with the public security department in a so-called card-breaking operation. The Bank of China was required to check each account, and the bank card would be frozen if it identified the funds were at risk. The staff said that customers could go to the bank's offices or log into the bank app for processing, which will be settled within two to three working days under normal circumstances. A depositor told the reporter that he filled in the bank's complaint form and uploaded relevant information on the bank app on August 9th. But so far, he still cannot withdraw money. The appeal process is relatively complicated. The customer must submit relevant information such as an ID card, social security status. Residential address and work certificate. The reporter found that many other banks, such as China Construction Bank, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, and Postal Savings Bank, also implemented the card-breaking operation. There were even long queues at the gates of some bank offices. According to China's first financial, the Chinese authorities introduced the card-breaking operation in October 2020. The process was designed to trace and crack down. On the illegal and criminal activities of selling telephone cards and bank cards, but the bank's actions sparked outrage and criticism from netizens. Weibo account Nani Guo Bei Lue questioned if the bank's operation was appropriate when they cut off the customers' bank cards before providing evidence of crimes. Guo Bei Lue claimed that without notice, prompt, or even reason, the banks couldn't freeze the customers' accounts, and though criminals may be exposed, people's lives are deeply affected. Popular real estate blogger. Chen Haoqing complained that a Shenzhen branch of the Bank of China had frozen depositors' accounts without authorization. He doubted if the reason was to prevent financial fraud for depositors. Lawyer Wang Chengyan raised the question that if a depositor is in a hurry to use the money for medical treatment, will the banks be held responsible for their action? The financial blogger Pi Friends Home commented that the card-breaking operation is really stupid. Other mainland netizens said that not many fraudsters had been caught in the end, but the lives of ordinary people had been severely tossed. Although the Chinese authorities claimed the card-breaking operation is aimed at cracking down on telecommunication and network frauds, observers believe there are other reasons for the move. Li Wei, a person in the Chinese blockchain industry, said that cracking down on fraud is a small part. The primary purpose of the card-breaking operation is to prevent the outflow of funds. He also believes that the card-breaking operation is the authorities' preparation for vigorously promoting the digital Renmin B. というのは1939年に、えー、陸軍からですね、馬政化というところからですね、えー、約今の金額にしたらやっぱり1億円近い金がですね、えー、研究機材が、えー、送られているというあのそういう資料は日本側に残っています。それで本格的なあの準備を始めたと研究の準備ですねそれを始めたというだから財政的にもそういう方向でやり始めたんではないかというふうに思います実験をですね731部隊と一緒にアンダーという731部隊の実験場であの実験をやったということはもう証拠はつかみましたからでそれは飛行機から低空で牛を馬にあのビソのウイルスをですね巻くとそれは実験に使ったのは羊ですけど牛と羊ですけど
でなんとかは死んだというやっぱり歴史を変えるというかね改ざんするということでね日本の加害責任を曖昧にするためにねとんでもないことを言ってると歴史を曲げるというかねでこれ事実は曲げられませんからねいくらそういうことを言ってもまあ私としては事実はこうですよという形で。あの反撃したいいと思いますそういう過去のね歴史に学ばないでねまた同じようなことをしたらとんでもないというふうに考えてます。